Welcome back to the channel, this is the Procom Geek and in today's video, we continue from where we left off in the previous video in our series on how to design a double story building in Procon with the help of AutoCAD. And today, we will be moving on to the ground floor layouts and hopefully the first floor layouts, placing the slabs and beams so that we can do the analysis in Procon of the entire structure. So let's not waste too much time and get into it. Into it. So a gentle reminder, if this is your first time coming to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and also click on the notifications bell so that you get uh, notifications of whenever I drop my videos. Also please remember to like the button, click the like button so that my video is helpful to you and also other people get to see it. So without wasting too much time, yes, just remember, like the video and now let's get into the content of the video. So as you may remember in the previous video, what we did is we had I showed you the building that I designed in AutoCAD architecture and we got a good look at it and everything as well. And then we went on to AutoCAD and we did the layout that you see on the screen right now where we did the foundation layout so we could visualize where we needed the columns, uh, our strip footage where it was going to be and also just to see what we're going to be dealing with when it comes to the foundation. So now what we need to do is we need to move forward and now do the ground floor layout right so obviously i went and did the drawing obviously previously i also have all the layouts on the ground so to better visualize this thing what i did i also did a section of it so by visualizing it i was using one of the drawings one of the section views from the architectures which if we need to look at it we have to go to the views here then new view we're just waiting for the drawing to load up but then this is the section of the drawing so as you can see the slab is not joined to the walls or the columns it's separate it's not going to be cast monolithically with the columns then obviously you have a slab which is on the first floor which is monolithic with the columns which is what i'm going to do and then obviously you're going to have your walls going up and then there's no ifs beam but then i put an ifs beam so this is the section that i cleaned up and drew to come up with the section where you see we have a slab on the ground that does not have any connection to the columns as you can see it's different from the first floor slab which is monolithic with uh, the columns as you can see from above from the drawing is used so the first thing now we need to do is just do the ground floor layout so to do that uh, the easiest thing that you have to do is just copy your drawing and then just press that then copy to the side make sure that f8 is on and yes i went on and edited the section line so you can keep that in but then the next thing that you want to do is you want to remove everything else that we did in the previous um because this now when we are at the ground at the ground this could be what you colloquially refer to as um the boxing level so i might add a picture of what a boxing level is but this is we're trying to get a picture of what we see when we reach the boxing level that is when we take our structure from the ground uh, below the ground to on top of the ground. So we're just gonna have to remove those things uh, quickly uh, So that we do not waste too much time. So just remove everything else that is not necessary for you guys So that is what we're gonna be doing now. I think this is gonna not we don't want to take too much time doing these things So let's just do it quickly as possible Right, so we're just gonna have to remove everything which we don't need now because this all affects the foundation, but it does not affect us when it comes to when we come to the box level. So we're just removing it nice and easily, nice and sweet. That looks nice for now. Just remove that. Also remove those snapping lines. We don't need them anymore. So just remove that. So yes, just continue to remove everything that you no longer need in a nice and fast manner. So this is also the same way you will be cleaning a drawing if you receive it from an architect and it has architectural properties such as the furniture, flows and everything else that you don't need. So yeah, it's sort of a tedious process sometimes, you know, you have to remove. Um... So some of my dimensions are coming off because they were snapped to the foundation bases but that's not a problem because we're gonna add them later if we still need them that is but in case we don't need them then it's not a problem it's a good thing that they're already off so you can even remove them now you know you don't really need them 
all we need are the five meter dimensions with the other top so this is the first thing that you want to do just make sure you clean up the entire drawing so that it's okay and you remain with only the most important things all right so as you can see this is what you're probably going to see when you come to the box level you're obviously going to have your columns protruding wherever you place them these are the stubs oh yes the stubs of the column will be protruding but you won't be able to see the base now because everything will have been um buried you know when you put the soil back after excavation right and the other thing is yes this is how it will look so you have your columns on the front which is supposed to support the um balcony and then you're gonna have your walls which already yes you you had them in the foundation but now the trenches are covered up you won't be able to see the trenches at the foundation when you're in the plan when you see it from above maybe you have a drone on top of your building this is what you see you see now the walls the columns wherever they are but now the other important thing that you're supposed to see as well is the internal slab you see to see this crown slab that is going to be inside and also you need to see the joints and everything so now the next thing that we're going to be doing is placing those necess necessities that you need your isolation joints your slabs and everything so let's just get into it okay now that you have cleaned up your foundation layout I think just to save us time when we're doing the first floor layout you just want to copy it as well to the side so that we have a clean drawing to start off with we don't need to re-clean this drawing again so now to start off things uh, first just start off by renaming this from foundation to ground flow let's just make sure it's in caps to ground flow layout the scale is to 100 so we're good to go then the next thing that you want to do is now you want to create the outlines of the internal slab which is though not monolithic so you want to offset everything by 10 so you want to offset by 10 because what you want to do by offsetting by 10 what you are basically doing is you're creating an isolation joint because your slab does not go all the way or is not monolithic with your wall you need to leave what we call isolation joints to cater for expansion right so when you highlight this uh, the contractor will definitely because subcontractors are not all professional some will definitely since it's going to be concrete we're just going to make a cyan as well and because uh, it's going to be concrete from above right some contractors will definitely not leave those joints I am telling you, so it's good for you to represent them clearly on your drawings. Right, so let's just make sure we make everything nice and clear. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure that you don't have any edges which are not clipped together. So just spacebar, repeat the previous command, jump in as quickly as you can. And let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. That is nice that looks nice for me all right so that is good guys that is good so we obviously do have some music playing in the background because you know i could autocad things you need some music in the background then also you need to remember that um even though you have isolation joints you will definitely need what we call soaker joints this just help in expansion of your concrete so you find that five meters is the general uh span for concrete slab before you know cracking so what so cut joints what they do is they help with the cracking so the isolation joints are for expansion and your saw cut joints are for cracking so you want to minimize the crack of your slab so you can just create a joint so five meters is like good in this case we have six so just to make it symmetrical what we're gonna do or nice and aesthetic we'll just create a joint at the middle of the slab so as you can see so to just do that since we have symmetry the next thing you can do is just copy this from there and we're now bringing it to the other side so there you go you have created your joints so you've indicated your slab and you've created joints then the other thing you want to indicate the span of the slab so what you do is just by create a line that goes all the way to this so this line let's make it um symbol let's make it a symbol so where is the program geek symbols all right so since we have symmetry we are going to copy as well uh -huh. so just copy this you're making the ground for layout so there you go so what you're going to do is let me just copy this text and show you what i am trying to achieve with these lines 
so let's copy this let's put it there now let's rotate it mm -hmm. let's rotate it like this all right so let's move it over there but now let's re annotate it what we're gonna say is we're gonna say this is a 150 millimeter thick uh, rc slab reinforced with s193 mesh so this what it does basically it just tells you that or it tells the contractor that okay this part or this part that you can see where my cursor is moving is going to be covered with a 150 millimeter thick rc slab which is going to be reinforced with s93 193 mesh then this is going to be one integral slab this means that this is one slab but which is going to have is sort of four panels but it's actually just going to be one construction with isolation joints and socket joints right so the same is going to be the apply for the next slab as well so this is what you're going to have you're going to have a 150 millimeter thick rc slab reinforced with s93 mesh at the same time and the other thing that you want to do now is to highlight that you definitely have your because if you leave it like this they don't know what your joints will look like so what you want to do is you want to say this is an isolation joint so let's make sure we indicate that so all you have to do is just say ij uh -huh. there you have your isolation joint you have isolation joint and have your isolation joint the isolation joint ij you want to have an ij there then ij and obviously you're going to have an ij then you want to change this to sj so cut joint right this one will help with cracking so you want to put it there Put it there, put it there, put it there, then put it there, then put it there, then put it there. Sometimes you can also have a construction joint if you want, but I'm just gonna put them as J's. I know I, I think initially I put them as construction joints, but you know you can change it as well. This is just proposal. You can always change it before you finalize and put it to the contractor. So the next thing you want to do is just copy these so that they go to the next slab as well. Right, so just copy there. Mm -hmm right then that looks nice right that looks nice for us looks nice for us looks nice for us and oh i already had this copied so i can always shift shift to unselect this and then just copy this All right so it's a good thing you can learn some new autocad tricks as well so as you can see right we annotated everything i think we annotated everything but we also need to annotate to show that this joint is going to be 1.3 meters from you know from the grid line so that's that's it it's going to be symmetrical the rest they can figure out for themselves so there you go you have done and you've created the ground floor layout it's simple it's easy as you can see so i want to keep the video short because the last time we had a problem with the audio whilst it was trying to sync so i'm trying to avoid that now with this video so this is it this is the ground floor and i think yeah let's just keep the video up to this for now and then the next video we do the first floor layout so yeah i think that's good all right, since like we have come to the end of the video for today we have done the ground floor layout now next what we're gonna do is do the first floor layout so in the next video i'll be taking you through how i'll be designing uh doing the first floor layout placing the beams doing the slabs as well just everything that went into because this that is the most important part because that's where we have the slab and our beam so we really need to see how we did it and where we placed them and then this will help us now move to Procon and further just start designing these elements one by one. So uh, just remember, if this is your first time coming to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Then also click on the notifications bell. If you're returning, please like the video, share the video. And until next time, let's just keep it safe and uh, you go see the next video soon.